Um, could you please both talk a little about what you love most about playing the relationship, being the youth? <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, you know, I think you've kind of put your finger on it. It was... <laughs> I'm sorry, just keep going. Can <laughs> I have a finger on the thing? No. <laughs> what are you talking about? What? No, I said keep going! Okay. <laughs> finger, I what? This, I want to be the effect of keep going makes me stall. Um, <laughs> no, no, that, that, that was the thing, is that they are brother and sister. They are... Colleagues, they are rivals. They are, um, you know, potentially more than brother and sister, and a lot of guilt involved in that. And um, so there was no simple way of, of playing any scene, and there was so much, so much subtext to anything that they had going on. And, you know, that that was that was on the page. Uh, you know, most of it. And um, and then you know you throw this guy into the mix, and the marriage partners, and then the boxing, and you know, there, it just. You know, no, no two male female characters have had that many sort of arenas to go at it in, I guess. Yeah, no, it's and, true. Um, and they were very much equals. You know, there was no, uh, you know, well, you know, the BSG world is kind of unisex anyway, so there's that added thing that people aren't used to seeing. You know, me punching her and nobody sort of batting an eyelid or sharing a, a locker room and nobody batting an eyelid. Yet yeah, there's sexual tension and and this sibling thing, the dead brother, and all that kind of stuff. So there was actually, there were, there were conversations about that before um, Apollo actually punched <laughs> Starbuck back, because he did it with complete abandon. He just punched her back, and, and they were like, I don't know if the audiences are ready for you to just punch a woman in the face. And they're like, yeah, they are. <laughs> I was ready. Yeah, they're very ready. She punched Jamie in the face you did, during yeah, that yeah, scene. Blood, drew blood. Yeah, yeah. yeah. His <laughs> eyes were watering. I was laughing. <laughs> so my, my British sense of chivalry went flying out the window really quickly. I was really quite surprised. And blood. <laughs> yeah. And so he hit me back. Yeah. Um, you know what I loved about that the 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 Lee Kara thing was that you know so many times in in series and in film we were shown this kind of relationship between a man and a woman where. It, your soulmate doesn't necessarily have to be the person that you're meant to be with. And I think that's what Kara and Lee had, was that they were soulmates, but they weren't meant to be together. And I think that it was the first time where, um, in a television series, they hadn't just miraculously worked everything out and ended up together, like they do in most series. Like, these people are complete opposites, and they're like, but we still love each other, we're married now, and it's happily ever after. And, and I think that it was the first like true representation of, of that kind of relationship between a man and a woman where they didn't end up together because they weren't supposed to end up together, but they were supposed to kind of learn everything from each other. Yeah, well, but, and that's why I think, for my money, the ending was was quite sublime. And I know it pissed a lot of people off because, I don't know, maybe it seemed too cozy or something, but there was a sense in which you, know, you reconcile that they're part of each other. And marriage is not an option for you know that kind of relationship. I think a lot of the time, um, especially with these two, who, who couldn't work out what they were meant to be, and so uh, you know the ending leaves so much to the imagination, and yet at the same time, it, it elegantly sort of sums up what what Starbuck is, not just to Lee but to the whole fleet. You know, she's a she's a um, uh, a totem. You know, she's someone that they all believe in, and someone that keeps them going, even though she has been dead for a while. Just like grandparents can be with you for the rest of your life, long after they're gone, and guiding you and, and, and part of every decision that you make. Um, I'm not sure how that squares out with all of the interaction you had for the last however many episodes after you died. But right. I mean, certainly for the end, it kind of was, I thought, beautiful and elegant and quite truthful. And I liked the idea that, that she went off at the very end, regardless if it was her or, um, I think that, and Trigger would have to answer this question, but I think that towards the end, his character took on this higher power sort of like feeling, and Starbuck had that. And I think whether they were saying goodbye as Sam and Kara, or as these two higher entities, knowing that they would see each other later, was just such a beautiful moment, because it was just like, I don't know, it was just, it's, I was so happy that we had that kind of finality between our characters, <clears throat> because when Sam came in, like, he truly did shake up this relationship that we thought was so 
simple and plain on paper with Lee and Kara. We just thought that of course they'd end up together. That's just the way it was. And then Sam came in and kind of like changed everything. And and I, you know, it was really nice. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing.